Hi everyone, my name is Kaylin. I'm a holistic nutrition consultant. I'm the author of the blog called grassfedgirl.com. And today we are so excited because we have a guest with us. It's Jen Winkler, coach Jen Winkler. She is from Arizona and she's coming all the way from Arizona. Thank you for joining us, Jen. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, it's going to be fun. You guys stay all the way to the end. We're going to get her take on some carnivore hot topics, such as macros and some tips for the holidays. So make sure you watch the whole thing. Welcome, Jen. I want to hear all about your story and how you got into carnivore. So go ahead. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Um, I'm going to try and sum it up because like most people, it's a long journey. <laughs> But about almost four years ago, I started uh, keto. So I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was 12. And um, we, skipping a bunch of the story ahead of time, I've been on lots of different medications that didn't really control the epilepsy fully. I also had um, insulin resistance and PCOS starting as a teen, which I'm sure kind of all went hand in hand. Later on, um, got married and we, my husband and I had a son, he's five now. And during my pregnancy, I gained about seven to 80 pounds, just, uh, I think primarily from the insulin resistance and all the food that I was choosing. So postpartum, I decided to do, uh, we actually watched a documentary that spoke about keto and it was on Netflix. And my husband has colitis. So he was in the middle of a big flare and we both knew we needed some kind of health change. He was actually going to do juicing, which he's glad he did it now that he has learned more. But uh, we said, okay, let's try this together. So we started keto, uh, making all the mistakes that everybody makes in the beginning, which is fine. Uh, learning as we go, listening to lots of podcasts and YouTube videos of people that seem trustworthy. And uh, it was quite a game changer. My husband's colitis uh, ended up going into remission pretty much within a month. And he hasn't had one flare up. He's off all his meds. For myself, my main goal at first was just to get off of most of my epilepsy medications, which did happen long term. I took it very slow because as an adult with epilepsy, you know, you have to be, especially with a child, you have to be more careful. So I was pretty much overdosing on two medications, um, controlling the seizures and now I'm off one of them and the other one I have officially have. I could keep going on the journey to lower it, but uh, I'm not having side effects from the medications anymore. It's all good. So that was my keto journey for two to three years. Uh, eventually, I, kind of, so I did lose a lot of weight as well. And eventually I plateaued and I actually started gaining some weight. And I tried every little hack and trick that I could find. Um, I was educating myself throughout the whole time. And I finally realized uh, part of my sugar addiction that I had, it was very difficult on keto to not have the keto sweet, to not have all the almond flour products and all those kinds of things. So I just needed a clean break from it all. Um, so I decided to try carnivore. I had read, excuse me, I'd read a lot of different articles. I read Judy Cho's book. Just before diving in, I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. So when I started it, like within a few, I'd say within a, a week, I noticed a dramatic difference. My ketones were at a better number, which I know most people don't keep their ketones. I don't encourage them to, but when you're doing it for a therapeutic purpose, like myself, I want to make sure it's still going to work for the epilepsy. So that happened and I was just, I started feeling the freedom and no longer addicted to wanting those sweets. Um, at first it was just like an occasional dark chocolate and I was satisfied. So um, that's pretty much how I started getting into it. And um, yeah, that's, that's the main part of it. Well, it, sound, it sounds like you had a really strong why to, you know, to be better for your son and to your son and your husband had a strong why with his colitis. So how important is that why for people? Oh my gosh, that's like one of the main drivers I do with my clients is I make sure they have a solid why. And it can't just be, 
weight loss, it can't just be to feel good. Like there has to be something concrete to hold on to. So that, yeah, so they have that goal oriented. So for myself, it was the medication. I want to get off as much as I can. The other was, like you mentioned, my son. Um, so he is on the autism spectrum. And any parents out there that have kids with autism, they understand how difficult it can be to be patient with them and to meet them where they're at. So that's another thing this does for me is those moments of high stress, I'm actually able to keep my cool and try and reason with him and speak to him and love him where he's at. Um, it, it was very difficult before when I was more of a glucose burner. So a lot of times that motherly, like uh, that motherly why, like, I want to do this for my child is a big driver as well. That's great. I, I think, you know, just sitting in a smaller pant size, is not going to keep somebody going over the long term. Um, so that's good that you emphasize that with your clients. So um, what is your typical day of your eating? What do you eat on a typical day? And Yeah, so I do, a typical day is always different for me because it depends where I am in my cycle. I notice eating certain ways at certain parts of my cycle really helps too, especially since I've had um, PCOS and insulin resistance. So for me, on just your average day, uh, I'm more of an intermittent faster. I don't really get hungry until probably about 11 o'clock, and then we have dinner at 5.30. So that's my eating window most of the time, sometimes even later than 11. I'll have, like, just, I actually ate a little earlier today because it's where I'm in my cycle, but uh, three scrambled eggs with maybe some leftover meat in there. Uh, lunch, I will typically have something like about a half a pound to a pound of meat. And it depends if I put some cheese on there or not, what kind of fats I'm using. And then for dinner, there's usually steak or brisket or, you know, some other meat. It, it, it's pretty, that's the one thing I like about carnivore. It's, it's predictable. I don't have to guess. I don't have to meal plan. It's just take a meat out from the freezer, let it defrost, throw it in the oven or the grill or whatever it is and it's it makes life so much simpler uh oh yeah i mean you just have to make sure you have like a full freezer and that's all you really right. need right no exactly we just we wait for the sales and then we stock up with whatever's on sale is your husband doing doing it too kind of or oh yeah so we actually there's my husband he is he wants to go back to carnivore. He's more of like ketovore. Most of the day he has meat in the evening. He'll have uh, some kind of vegetables. He'll throw in the rouse tomato sauce with certain things. And then mine stays clean. I also have my mom that lives with us. We take care of her. Um, she's legally blind and deaf. And when she first moved in, she had fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, her eyesight was really starting. She has very minimal left in one eye. So her, she has a lot of stuff, fibromyalgia, arthritis, all that. So she eats keto bore as well, whatever we're making she eats. And she's lost probably about 30 to 40 pounds. Her lived fatty liver is reversed. And one of the things I don't hear too often is about eye pressure. So her eye disease is retinitis pigmentosa. So it has to do with the retina in the back. And then she also has glaucoma. So her eye pressure is normally not very good, but ever since living with us for the past two to three years her eye pressure has been the best it's ever been since diagnosed with her so eyes so you think so that's like that. lowered inflammation in her body yeah and she actually just had her crp check and it's it's relatively good for everything she's gone through so um yeah so our whole family does my son we don't have any like ultra processed foods in the house we don't have cheeses or a goldfish or any of that stuff if he's hungry, he'll have some jerky, he'll have some cheese, yogurt, you know. So he's more of a keto whore as well. He just doesn't like vegetables, which is fine. He, he yeah. wants the nutrients and meat. So, uh, yeah, our whole household eats this way and thriving on it. Have you noticed any, has it helped him any with his, like, behavior or anything? Um, I would say to a degree, yeah. Because 
he's been eating this way he's also since he was two or three somewhere in there uh, at first definitely he does have a gluten allergy anyway so it works out he gets like all these bumps on his skin when he's having bread and crackers so we as far as the emotional regulation and such i'll be honest i haven't noticed a big difference with that we did start some other supplements with him that has made a giant difference so that one and i i prefer not to say it yet because it's only been two weeks but the two weeks that he's been taking it has been like a 90 percent improvement so it's all gut stuff as you know you know it's just trying to find what can balance his gut yeah you probably have a lot of people giving you advice all the time <laughs> that you may not want um so what do you think about sweeteners on carnivore can you eat natural sweeteners or do you think it's like a slippery slope oh that's one of those things that's very individualized i personally if i'm guiding somebody through carnivore i'm just going to meet them where they're at and see do they have that sugar addiction then i'm going to say probably not because then it'll be a slippery slope um for myself the first so I've been carnivore since May. I forgot to mention that part. It's only been this year. Before it was primarily animal based, but so for me at first, I definitely wanted the first three months no sweeteners, no vegetables, no nothing. It's just meat and fish and butter mm -hmm. and an occasional cheese. Eventually, like I recently for myself, I made Maria Emmerich protein sparing modified bread, but I put in some allulose and it it wasn't an issue for me. I didn't go into any addiction mode or anything like that. I could barely taste it, honestly. It just kind of gave it a different texture. As far as keto sweet and stuff like that, I made it a keto Thanksgiving. So uh, I actually didn't feel great after physically, but there was no addiction aspect. Like there wasn't a craving. and I was able to go right back to carnivore the next day. So I think it's just one of those healing aspects is you got to give it your gut time to heal um, your mindset you have to get into that why do i want to eat this sweet on carnivore right now why do i want to put the cb in here what what is it is it literally just the taste or is there something else you're craving in a sense you know emotional eating boredom whatever it is um yeah that's that's good that you were able to go back the next day and some people just get derailed and they go like a month and two months yeah. and they never go back. I mean, that's how I've been in the past when I'm trying to get either I was trying to get stricter on my keto uh, without having the sweets. I just say, oh, just one day I'll just one day I'll just have the lily chocolate or one day I'll make these cookies. And but it gets into the cycle of it's not just one day. Oh, it's just a week. Oh, it's just a month. And then falling backwards yeah and it's 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 i can i can relate a lot so <laughs> now are you more of a high fat person or more of a high protein person yeah i've been listening to a number of podcasts with or, that, a, or a non-counter <laughs> yeah i'd honestly say a non-counter i have been able to get really in tune to what my body needs. So um, I, I feel like most beef is a one-to-one -one ratio. There's obviously some of them that are higher protein, but if I have a higher protein, moderate fat cut of meat and I'm eating it, I can tell my body's like, nah, I need more fat. Or however my brain is feeling, if I'm feeling kind of foggy, then I'll throw in some extra butter or tallow or something on it to make it a bit more fatty so I, I don't really feel like I fall in any camp I just try and see how I'm feeling that day most of the time I'd say it is probably a little bit more fat uh, I don't feel as great with just lean proteins like having chicken breasts and ground turkey and all that kind have of have you stuff. ever tried to just do that for like a whole day or anything like a lean day or Not something not on purpose actually no i did it was a while ago uh, when there were some other people in the space doing their like 
to lean protein or lean lean days and then fat day. And like, let me try that one. So one day I had it. I just couldn't do it because it doesn't taste good. To me. I feel like I'm forcing myself to do it. I have to have the fat in it. And and that's what I mean. Like some of the days where I, I try to track once a month to make sure I'm still I'm not going too low or too high. And most of the times when I do that one time tracking, it's pretty much a 50-50 ratio. Like the amount I have in protein is the same amount I have in fat, maybe a little bit higher in fat. Yeah, that's the same with me. It's like, seems like it was like 150 yeah. to 100 or 120 or, you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's typically around where mine is. There's, uh, I know like before my period start, I tend to up the fat more because of that chocolate craving that'll come and the magnesium and all those kind of things that'll help with. And then I try not to do fast as much during that time either. So that's why it's like throughout the month, it tends to fluctuate, but it's not super dramatic. Yeah. I, not, I mean, I think that if you're going to do carnivore long-term, I don't, I don't feel like tracking anything is really sustainable. I mean, you could do something for a week or maybe a month, but if it's really a lifestyle, I don't think you're going to be able to do it very much, you know, yeah. maybe just for a short time to get to your goal or something, but, um, you know, mental health matters. And then if you have like a really stressful life where, you know, I have a small baby who's always like up in the middle of the night and, yeah you know, you have your mother and your son. And so it's like, you're just going to go and eat chicken breast. That's another big stressor, you know, that you can't handle. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. I can't, if food is meant to be nourishing and enjoyable, both, not just one or the other. So it's, if it's, if I feel like I'm forcing it, I don't, it's not enjoyable. And then, like you said, it's another stressor. And it's the same with things like working out. I want to do things that I feel good doing, not just I have to do this today. I do it like a celebration for my body that I can do it. But if it doesn't bring me joy, I'm like, hmm, I'll find something else. What do you think about working out when people start carnivore? Is it, should they work, focus on working out or should they take a break or how should they add it in? Yeah, so I would say, um, again, very individualized, as you know, all these things are individualized. I can speak for myself. I wanted the best, I wanted to be the best that I could be. And my goal was to keep my insulin low. So um, I'm sorry, I just got a text message from my high school about something important. So, <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll say, I'll say what I think about working out. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. I mean, I was a personal trainer for seven years. So uh, I think if you have been doing a strong workout program and you're used to it, you can continue. But if you haven't been, then it's not the time to start a big strenuous workout plan, especially if you're not already keto or uh, fat adapted. If you're not used to burning fat for fuel, then you need to give yourself a few weeks Make sure you're not having keto flu and, you know, movement is really important. You need to go walking. You need to go, um, you know, stretching your body, being outside, but doing a big new routine, I think is too much because it's a huge shift to go carnivore and you need to just get used to shopping and cooking and taking care of yourself before you add in a big workout routine. That's all new. So you know, it's like the people who go with after the first of the year and they hit the gym and in five minutes, they're already quitting. You know, it's like, you can't start too many new things at once. Do you agree? Yeah, no, I do agree. It's, I, I feel like for myself, because I've been keto for so long and kind of a transition to carnivore, I ended up starting strength training at the same time. Well, probably like a month after carnivore. And I wanted to control my insulin. I wanted to get my blood sugars regulated. So for me, um, it, it ended up kind of being an extra stress relief in a sense. But for most people, I would say, yeah, just take one step at a time. Um, if, you're trans if you're doing a similar transition, it's fine. I'd say it's fine. But if you're just jumping into carnivore from like 
standard American diet or something. It definitely needs to be one step at a time. Those stressors can have the opposite effect, like you said. So were you, was carnivore not helping your blood sugar enough? It was, um, but I, I just wanted to see if it could get better. So with my insulin resistance, um, I still had the insulin resistance belly kind of thing. And I was really only on carnivore for two months before I started working out. It was just one of those that I wanted to build muscle as well. I kind of wanted, I'm going to be honest, it was probably a little bit of impatience also. I'm, I'll just be flat out honest. But I fell in love with it and it made me feel good. So the working out wasn't necessarily a goal to, uh, to lose the weight and to lose the fat. If that happened, it's great. But I wanted to feel stronger. I wanted to, it helped with my mindset helps me focus for the day. So that was part of it. Uh, but it wasn't the main, it wasn't the main driver of all the blood sugar. It was kind of both. And my dietitian, I do see somebody to make sure I'm doing it correctly for epilepsy as well. And she was the one that encouraged you like start lifting some weight, get that muscle building so your body can utilize uh, your insulin more properly. I noticed too, when I was doing keto, I felt very weak. And I think maybe that was because I was, I never felt like I could exercise. And Mm. when I was started carnivore, I did feel like I could exercise. And that was, I was like, why is this? It's so strange because I never felt like I had the energy on keto. Now, if I ate carbs, I could, (laughs) but uh, it was so weird that I felt like exercising when I started carnivore. I don't know if it's just the increased protein or what, but it was, it was strange. Yeah. I think for me, it's just, the, there's something about this lifestyle that helps with the mind. I mean, they talk about keto and you can, your brain fog disappears and all that stuff. And that did for a little bit for me, but I would get that afternoon slump pretty often. Um, and the brain fog in the morning, I was relying on MCT like every morning to get me going. Now I still do things like MCT once in a while. If, if I need to get moving quick, I mean, I have to bring my son to school and all that stuff. So some mornings, if I'm just, you know, I'll put a little in there because I can't do caffeine. So that's kind of the downfall, but, uh, so what yeah, do you, you, you make like tea or co- decaf coffee or. Yeah. Most of the time it's a decaf coffee. I use like a Swiss water process that helps get rid of all as much as you can. It's not the best, but there's some mornings I'll do some tea, uh, especially now with the colder weather. I just, there's something about tea that I, in a nice mug that helps. Oh yeah. Um, so what do you think about, what do you think about all the time we have people saying, you know, being, being, car, being on any diet is bad and that we're just promoting diet culture. And what do you think about, I'm sure you've thought about that. (laughs) I have. The thing is the the term diet, I feel like has, I mean, whatever you're eating, you're on a diet. That's how I see it. If you're eating your basic pasta bread, whatever people, the standard American diet, there's diet in the word right there. So no matter, To me, when I define diet, it's just the way you're eating. Um, I don't agree with the calories in, calories out model. You know, I don't agree with lowering calories significantly unless, you know, for maybe short periods of time, but not not the 1,200 calories a day diet kind of thing for months on end. You're going to destroy your metabolism that way. Uh, (laughs) So as far as like, people saying don't go on a diet or carnivore or keto or paleo, whatever it is, you're, the goal of it is to find what works for your body, right? What's going to make you feel good? What's going to nourish you? What's going to be the most nutrient dense? So I, I, when I post, I'm saying, I'm laughing because when I post things, I try to avoid that term as often as I can because of the stereotype around it. So I'll use lifestyle, which is still even kind of, kind of thing with but yeah yeah I mean I think it's also different when you have a chronic health issue it's like I think somebody like you or me 
because I have a thyroid problem that where my thyroid is damaged to the point that I probably will always have to be on medication. Yeah. Uh, some, some, of course, less than I used to be, but we will always do something for our health and the side effect is we may lose weight or we may feel better, but we're always going to be probably doing something because if we eat standard American diet, we'll, we'll be very sick. Right. So no, exactly. So I don't appreciate being lumped in, you know, with the calorie restrictors or something like that, because like, if I like just, you know, you said on Thanksgiving, keto Thanksgiving, I did the same thing. I woke up my elbow. I couldn't hardly bend it because it was so, because I had eaten some stuff that didn't agree with me. You know, I was bloated. I gained like seven pounds in three or four days. You know, it's so I had to go back because my body was literally giving out on me, you know? So yeah, it was screaming for help. And so it's like, I want, I, you know, I will always probably have to do some sort of, you know, elimination diet or else yeah. my body will not work well. And I think, you know, we've learned that plants have a lot of chemicals and defenses that will, will attack us if we don't, um, if we're not used to them or we can't tolerate them. So, and, yeah. And I think that's part of it too, with the, the keto was all the almond flour, the oxalate, the oxalate from chocolate, the oxalate from spinach, like all of that, I think was eventually building up in me. So that's what I, I did kind of what originally just, oh, I'll just do an elimination and then I'll bring stuff back in. And I kind of started doing that. I had some broccoli and I was fine. I had some green beans, I was fine. But it was literally like a half of cup worth or something. The main goal for that for me was just to see, okay, let's, in Christmas, we're going to Florida, right? With our family. That's the hardest thing with some people is when they're visiting family, how do they stay carnivore? Or if they're going on vacation. So for me, it's helpful to know what other vegetables I can have if I do need to fill up a little bit more with something else on vacation versus just oh let's just eat anything and then feel my crap again so that's been kind of my goal testing some foods and knowing which vegetables i can have in a moment like that yeah sometimes you want to just be normal and put a couple of vegetables on your plate just so nobody <laughs> says anything <laughs> and you can kind of push them around and have a couple of bites. And, and like you said, the amount matters. Like I used to eat a head of broccoli, a head of cauliflower every single day. And wow. I could probably eat a little bit of broccoli or a little bit of cauliflower, but you know, I loved it. It was, you know, it was like butter as a carrier for butter. You know, yes. so I, mean, I used to make soup and puree it. And, you know, I thought I was Ina Garten. So, um, with bone broth and everything. And so it's like, I would eat way, way, way too much, you know, and it's like, more is better, you know, of, of vegetables, I thought, because that's what everyone says, you know, and yeah. that was killing my guts for sure. So, um, well, you know, it's a holiday, so, you know, give people some encouragement, you know, how did, how do they stay carnivore or if they do have a cheat day, how do they get back and how do they stay motivated? Yeah. I, for me, I feel like meal prepping isn't completely out of the question you do have to make sure you're prepared for when those cravings hit for when the temptations happen so always making sure you have um, some sort of leftover meats in the fridge I feel like bacon sausage something that can be quick and easy to get but still nutrient dense um, one of my favorite things to do is make jerky so I have like a cheap $40 dehydrator it's, it's not expensive you can get it on Amazon message me if you want the one I use and uh, I'll go to the meat, I'll go to the butcher and say, can you slice this uh, jerky uh, with for me? And yeah, sure, okay. And sometimes we do have like a really old slicer here that it works if we need it, but otherwise I like the butcher doing it. And just dehydrating it, putting some spices on there. Sometimes I'll do a barbecue spice, um, taco one, garlic, whatever it is. And I always keep some jerky around for those moments that either if it's a quick I gotta leave now and I'm, I need something now let me grab a bunch of pieces of jerky or I really feel like having some 
chocolate. Let me grab a piece of jerky. Like, if if somebody's being tempted to have the sweets and to serve off, I would ask, I would have them ask themselves, why do you want the chocolate? Kind of like I was saying earlier, why do you want the sweet? Why do you want whatever it is you're asking? Are you bored? Are you hungry? Are you upset? Are you emotional? Uh, did you even eat enough? Did you finish your meal to be satiated? If you're not satiated, go get something else. And if you're not willing to eat some meat or fish or whatever it is, then you're not actually hungry. So it's a lot of that mindset stuff that you have to really, you can have a coach like myself or like you, uh, but in that moment, they have to learn and train to themselves how do they, to be able to address the situation in the mindset. That's some great ideas. And, you know, you kind of have to pregame, I think, like college, you have to, yeah, because you couldn't afford the drinks out at the bar. So you have to eat a little bit at home sometimes, or at least have your dish ready to go. And then you can, um, it's like, sometimes I know if my sister is going to a restaurant where she knows there's not going to, like the food's going to be really expensive or something, she'll eat a little bit before she goes. Yeah. And so, same thing with a party. If you know, there may not be a lot of protein. It might be all carbs. You could eat a little bit before you go. So you're not going in starving. And that also saves you some money too. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. It's, that's actually another aspect too. Like we're staying at an Airbnb in Florida. So we'll do all our shopping. We'll have, we'll probably have bigger breakfast than we normally do. And that way, when we do go out, we don't need to, or go over our family's house. We don't have to eat all their meat you know, or we might buy some and then bring it over and cook for them as well. So there's a lot of ways to work around it. Um, I had somebody else in the carnivore space talked about calling ahead to the restaurant and asking what spice or what sauces do you use? Do you put sugar in these meats kind of thing and figuring out ahead of time what you can eat so you don't feel awkward in that moment in front of your family or your friends saying like, oh, yeah. you know, picking apart the menu to, can, can you do this for me? Can you do, you know, you know, ahead of time. And then when they're ordering, you just pick up the menu. I'm going to do this, 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 without this, with the side of that. Boom. And it, it takes so much pressure off of it. So. Uh, yeah. You can go yeah. on the website and see everything too. And then like you said, call is a good, uh, if you need more information, you know, call yeah. and, and then you're, you're ready at the restaurant. You don't have like a panic attack when they come up to ask you and, yeah, and I have kind of my go-tos like brisket, place, um, you know, don't go out for steak much because it's just so expensive, you know, it's no, it's maybe once a month or something or less even. And a lot of times with my family, I just say, bring your own steak and we'll just all get together and we That's all bring our own steak and grill out or, um, you know, something along those lines and my birthday's coming up. So I'm already thinking like, maybe we're going to do like a little, like you know, get your pancake griddle out on the table and then you can grill like filet mignon on the, everybody can oh. kind of do that. And then you can put shrimp and stuff. And it's yeah. kind of fun. It's like, like you're at a, maybe a Japanese restaurant or something, but no, totally. without the, the throwing. So maybe we'll do that. Um, and of course I love Brazilian, but we don't have one here anymore. They all went out of business. So, uh, I might have to find somewhere. Laura was like, you should invest in one. <laughs> like, yeah, good idea. So, um, that would be good. Yeah. I, we have one 10 minutes down the road. So it's, it's really, we, we used to have two, but they, one got blown up during the bombing we had like a oh year ago. <laughs> and um, another one went out of business during COVID. So, uh, well, Jen, I know you do coaching. Tell us about what you're offering and where people can find you and connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. So this month I actually started doing some kind of our coaching, like the group coaching. Um, we have our first group of women. It's a, a bunch of awesome ladies that they're gung ho. They've been in the chat, private chat together and sharing their pictures and helping each other out. So it's been really exciting. So I do group coaching, carnivore um, style. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. That approach, I usually use uh, keto at first. Unless somebody wants carnivore one-on-one, -on -one, I'm more than happy to. It's just 
a lot of times carnivore is a lot easier to do. You don't need as long. So my program is a 12 week balancing blood sugar program. I focus with women who uh, have that blood sugar imbalance from whatever it is, insulin resistance to pre-diabetes to diabetes and take them on a nutritional journey, educating them what foods spike the sugar, what don't, how, you know, customize macronutrients for them. So I do those two things. Primarily people can find me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. My Facebook account has kind of gone off the end. I don't go on there as much. So my Instagram handle is pretty simple, just coach Jen Winkler and with one end. I know some people just do. And yeah, you can find me on there. I try and give as many tips and tricks and be as real as possible. Yeah, she makes a lot of reels too. They're really good. Oh, the reels too. Yeah. Reels in that sense and then just being real and practical. So. Yeah. <laughs> real with an E E and an E A. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, make sure and follow Jen. I'll put your handle here. And then um, just, you know, if you want more advice, just send her a message and get in her yeah. coaching group. So we are so excited that you were here today, Jen. Some great tips for everyone. And please like, share, subscribe. This is very important that we get the word out about how meat can heal us. So Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.